Good evening, everybody. I'll wait for everybody to come in. Good evening, Mrs. G. Oops. How are we this evening? Uh, where am I going? I think where I'm going. More it is right. Hiya, John, sweetheart. I figured the noise out this week. Right. Um, my paintbrushes will need. How is everybody? Are you all having a lovely week? Lovely weekend? Start of weekend, should I say? I'm just gonna move this because I'm gonna talk to you about something first. I um, hope you're all having a wonderful day. I haven't been, I must admit, I haven't been 100% about a week and a half now. Um, just in a lot of pain. And I don't know whether it's because of the cold weather or whether it's because I've been doing too much. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but all I do know is that um, I was on an NR in about coming live, and I thought, no, I gotta go live. I gotta, I gotta see everybody. I gotta go live. <laughs> so I'm so glad that I'm with you tonight. Um, so she says, I'm all good, all the better for having my new buttons. Are you, Mrs. G? Oh yes. I'm not even gonna ask what buttons you've got, or what shape they are, or what they are. I just think. You know, not envious one bit. Just for those um are listening in, uh, Miss Is G sent me a picture of her new buttons, and they are mother of pearl buttons, and they're about I would say bigger than an inch. They they huge, so I'm not envious at all. Not envious that she's got buttons. Not one smithereen at all. <laughs> Good evening, Paula, sweetheart. How are we this evening? And she had some new buttons the other day as well. Um, so you know how um while I'm waiting for everybody to come in, you know how last week I did a part one, um, and I did wait a second, Chris. Yeah. Could you turn it kindly down, please? Turn what down? Your noise. Oh, sorry. Uh, right. <laughs> Hi, Mary. How are we, sweetheart? Um, so last week, I did a part one on watercolours. I did a wet on wet version on watercolours. And I said last week that I was going to be doing part one, part two, because I've been doing um, some more colour videos, but unless, and I know a lot of people are picking more colours up, but unless, because um, of watercolours, is it such a, you have such a variety to pick from when you go into a shop. You have brushes to consider. You have what paints to pick up, um, what good brands are out there. Do I need anything to paint? Um, would it be easier if I did colour pencils, watercolour pencils? Would it be easier? Um, would that then go on to normal paper? So I sort of slowed it completely down. And I am going to do different, each part, I'll do a different part on watercolours. Last week, I concentrated on a wet on wet version, um, which meant that you had your wet paper and you were able to mix your colours on that piece of paper. And we made different pictures up. And I showed you different um, ways of doing it and how to stop your lines. That's what I would call it. Your lines on the outside of the edge of your papers and how to control it. This week, um, Chris bought me a new set of brushes. So, and I have got brushes that you all have seen. So I'm going to show you the brushes I have been using. And then I'm going to share with you what brushes Chris picked up. So these are the brushes that I have been using. 
they're my brushes they are the ones i have been using and i've been using these tiny little ones as well but i got asked several times this week from doing these videos what brushes are the best brushes to use if i just want to do um some stamps so if i'm using some stamps and some inks what brushes shall i use to do that what are the best brushes to pick up so these brushes um i picked up from amazon these ones i picked up from the range they're all di by different companies so these ones are royal and lan lan nickel i think how you pronounce that these ones are artist brushes but all the brushes can come under the bracket of an artist brush and then these ones chris picked up for me in the week so i'm going to share with you something now when you first are picking brushes i will say this i just ordered myself some watercolors and brushes and cannot wait to give this a try oh mary i'm so excited for you sweetheart you will absolutely love watercolors it's one of those mediums where it allows you to be free and like i always say there's no like mistake in crafting but watercolors allows you to make those mistakes in happy mistakes if i'm making any sort of sense um so you will love it i'm so pleased you've ordered them i'll have to go and watch that video oh sweetheart yeah well last week i did um a wet on wet this week i'm doing a wash technique it's very very similar um but i'll explain that in a second but it's very similar and next week i'll do a part three um and we'll do a different technique altogether but i literally just want to take it back down right to the basis so no one is confused when you're buying brushes confused to what paper to buy confused to what paints to buy or whatever so as you can see if you saw these on a shelf you would say well come up they look the same to me what's the difference the difference is there is no difference really all the brushes depends if you pick them up singly or in a pack for example let's get my angled brush this is an angled brush i'm not going to talk about an angled brush tonight but i wanted to share with you what how it's different so in this pack they've got an angle brush number as a 12 i'm going to explain the sizes in a second now in this pack that chris picked up i have an angle brush here and it just says large angle brush it doesn't give me a size it's a little bit smaller it's this one's a lot thicker than this one it's a lot wider but it's still an angle brush so it, when you're picking up brushes my number one tip is to firstly decide whether you want a long handle and more whether you want more fluid or whether you want a short handle normal handle what kind of things are you intending to do with your watercolors that's your sort of first basis because when you're learning watercolors with anything it does get a little bit confusing just like sewing when you learn to sew there's lots of different things you can pick up to make sewing a little bit easier it's the same with watercolors so if you said to me well Colette, i really want to do i want to use my stamps and i want to put some detail into the stamps right well let's start off with a rigger brush now a rigger brush I'm going to put these ones away because I'm going to concentrate on these ones only because they've got the names on the brushes. So it makes it a little bit easier when I'm um, explaining things. So a rigger brush. Now, when you go into a shop, some shops have them marked on the brush or some shops will have, say that's the little shelf. Some shops will have the little barcode marked as to what the brush is. So check out what the difference is. So a rigger brush is the brush, I'm, one of the brushes I'm going to talk tonight. So I have two in this pack. I have this one. And I have 
right now I have two. Why can't I find it? Mop an angle. Flat an angle, mop brush. I thought I saw two earlier. Ah, here it is. Right, a rig of brush. So this, this pack allows me to have, if I pull some of these brushes out, on the brushes, it actually will tell me what the brush is. So, for example, this brush, it's saying it's a Conda Medium Mop. These ones I've got in my hand is a Conda Large Rigger and a Conda Small Rigger. Conda, I think, is the meek bit. It's the what the brush is called is what I'm concentrating on. So a rigger brush. Now, a rigger brush can be known as a script brush. It can also be known as a fine line brush. Now, you'll notice on both of these brushes, they have quite a large point to them. Depends, again, how small or thick your brush that you've picked up just depends on how thick the end is so a rigger brush will always be a small pointed brush it hasn't got a shape necessarily to the end like an angle brush like where's my angle brush gone i just had an angle brush in my hand like an angle brush oh. wait a minute <laughs> An angle brush, most of you will be similar to. An angle brush is something like that. It's got an angle to it. A rigger, detail, or a script brush. Sometimes they're marked as, up as a script brush. Sometimes they're marked up as a fine liner brush. Or sometimes they're marked up as a rigger brush. They are all the same brush. So an angle brush would be an angle. But a rigger brush is the long brush and it sort of comes to a point right at the end of the brush now I'm going to speak about what a rigger brush actually does so a rigger brush is a fine liner brush that will hold more of your water and will last longer intermittently um we discovered we clat and I Right, so I'm just reading comments as I'm going along to make sure that I'm not having missed anything. There's such a lot of techniques to learn with watercolours. I've always wanted to try, but it took a lesson from Colette for me to actually have a go. Oh, Rian. Yeah, I know you love to sit in it. We had um, me and Rian to meet up once a week, maybe twice, depending on what we're doing. And one day I said, oh, should we just watercolour? She's like... Oh, never watercolour. I said, don't worry, we'll just sort of take step by step. And um, we did um, like a tree, like a wintry scene. So, yes, she was really good at it. So, a fine liner brush, I'm going to call them a fine liner, a rigger, or a script. It doesn't matter what you call them, that's what they basically are. So, I have got next to me. Now it will concentrate, it will concentrate, it will constantly keep going and going and going. Because of the point on the brush, it will allow for that sort of, um, when you are writing, you sort of, you, your pen does flow, you can write with these brushes. So if you want to do like um, a word, you can do a word. If you wanted to do a bit of detail in your work, these are the type of brushes you're after. So I'm going to show you. Now, I've got next to me my new gadget. I'm so pleased. My new little gadget. So this gadget, I hope you, go, you guys can see. Right, so on one side, I have where I can lay my brushes inside and wash them. Never put your brush directly down because what that does, it lifts the brush bristles bris, bristled up at an angle and you can effectively damage your brush so with this little gadget and i had it from amazon and again i've forgotten to put the link underneath but if you lay it at an angle that is my wash side this side 
is where I can actually wash my brush because it's it's got like um little lines that I can go up and down a bit like a swimming pool so it's got a swimming pool part one side and a wash part where I can wash my colors and lay my brushes the other side not only that but I can lay my brushes in the little holes not only this this is my new little gadget this is the top right now if you watched me watercolor you'll know i've got um tubes of paints and i always struggle because i put tube on on a, a palette and you can guarantee i left more paint at the end of my work than i did when i started this bad boy is where you can put your paints so you would squeeze each paint now I've got a variety of different greens reds pinks you name it it's all in here and then you can mix your colors on here wipe it off wash it whatever you want to do and then put your lid on and it's portable so you can take it absolutely anyway isn't it a cool gadget so that's my new gadget for this week I must admit so I'm gonna try and show you what a rigger brush does. They can bring things off separately. It is a cool gadget. Right, so I have wet and I've wet my paper. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take my pink. And it didn't cost that much actually and i'm going to soak the brush now this type of brush can hold a lot of water and it can hold a lot of paint because the idea of it it doesn't matter if you have got the shakes in your hand this brush actually allows you not to show it in your work so say i've got a shaky hand and sometimes i do when i'm painting if i'm concentrating too much this will allow and depends on how much pressure you put through the brush will depend on the type of thickness you have. So if I lay it completely flat, you can see that the thickness is quite wide because this one, it's a small rigger brush, small liner then, if you will. So if I put it flat and on its side, it'll go across. If I, I can do little lines with it, so I can fill in little details on trees and especially on like um, flowers I can pick the detail up around the flowers and stuff so I can do that too hi Victoria and Edge sweetheart lovely to see you thank you for popping in I'm trying to learn to watercolors also oh sweetheart well you will love watercolors like I just said watercolors is one of those mediums where it doesn't matter what are you doing? If you've made a mistake, it will allow you to make a mistake and it won't show. So if you give somebody a card, for instance, and you've made a mistake and you've gone, oh, I've put a bit of pink over here and it wasn't supposed to be there. You can actually make that pink into something. It will allow for it. But I will ask you, sweetheart, what is your name? So I'll go through everybody's names since we're all in. We have Mrs. G, who is Rian, obviously Mary. <laughs> um, my name's Colette. And Victoria Edge is Victoria. And if I see anybody else, I'll shout their name out. So that is a small rigger brush. This brush, if you were a shaky hand, so I'm, I'm shaking on purpose now, and I go oh i'm shaking this brush will keep it perfectly straight for you and i'm purposely shaking it will allow me to keep a completely straight edge because it's that type of brush okay so i'm gonna now talk about so you have this is a small one and i want to show you what the large one does the large one basically does the same thing except 
it's a bit bigger it's a lot wider and there's more bristles in it for starters this doesn't have a number on i will explain sizes in a second because sometimes that can get confusing as well when you go to buy brushes for instance and they've got all these different sizes on you think oh what size do i pick up for what do i want so i'm going to coat this brush in loads and loads of paint and i'm doing that on purpose so this one bear in mind this is a lot thicker so if you want detail go for a small um brush now i can say these are either called rigger script or fine liner all those names mean the same thing so this is a lot thicker and you can keep your brush and it'll keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going because it's soaked up all the paint and it's soaked up all the water if you're allowed to do it you can still do your lines except it'll be a lot thicker you can also with a lot wider script as you write with it you can script with it because that's why they call script some some of the brushes are called these type of brushes are called script for that purpose they can actually write for you as well so that is what this does so i'm going to wash my brush because we are going to do something in a second and i'm going to talk about some some other brush all right and with my new gadget let me just share with you something you see on this side this is the side where i'm getting rid of all the paint out of my brush say i've got rid of all the paint and i want to move to my next color i move it over to this side with this clean water and there's no colored water this one hasn't quite got rid of all the paint as of yet and you can actually buy um stuff as well to prolong your brushes i can't remember what it's called you can use sesame sesame oil sesame oil i think that's what it's called to prolong your brushes and if you've got a wooden palette you can put it on there to prolong that so the next brush i want to talk to you about is i'm going to move this i'm going to keep moving stuff is a mop brush now i think you will be familiar with a mop brush so i have a small mop i have that's an angle now mop brushes are fairly thick you can do different things with a mop brush um i would say that is no let me move it this way um there it is now you can do fairly different things with a mop brush and i'll explain what in a second now i've only picked out three out of my pack i think there's another one so a mop brush with a liner brush let me just call it a liner so that one would be either called a script a fine liner or a rigger any of those three names mean the same brush this one man, i'm about to share with you just gonna dampen my paper This one I'm about to share with you is a mop brush. So a mop brush comes in different sizes. As you can see, I've got a small one, what we would call a medium one, and then a large one. Now, they, they're really useful for different things. So it holds a lot of color and it doesn't have, whereas a rigger has a bit of spring to it, if I do that, it's got a bit of a spring to it. This hasn't, it's very, it's very stiff, as in stiff. It doesn't matter if I wet it. It hasn't got that same spring. That would be what we would call a spring. This hasn't, it's sort of saying, I don't, I'm not made for that. It hasn't got a spring, so it's not going to give you the fine detail. What it is going to do, let me wet it, let me, and we're going to test it on the largest one. 
is going to give you a free flow movement with your wrist. So I'm going to pick a different colour. Um, let's pick purple. Now, as you can see, it didn't take a long time for the brush to hold all that colour. And you can always tell when you've got a good brush when the colour gets to about a quarter way to the edge or gets right down. It is getting down. The more I'm doing this, it will reach the edge. That can also help you get a lot of paint on your brush as well. So this will allow you free movement. So if you don't want to be doing detail work and you just want a bit of colour on your work and you just want to go with the movement of your wrist, this is the brush to use. So as you can see, I'm not, I'm not making any particular... I'm not making any particular waves. I'm not doing anything. I'm just making free flow movements. Now I'm going to do the middle one and I'm going to share with you if you was to do. So say you wanted to do a background piece. I don't know for a journal or a card or whatever you wanted to do it for. So let me just get. I think this is like a pinky rosy kind of colour. It might be red. Right, so, so again, free flow, and I'm not doing any particular movement. I'm just making sure that my wrist is literally just flowing, and I'm just not Came where I'm putting my paint, I'm just literally flowing. So I can go back to my thick brush and I can just flow. Just maybe you want to practice with the brushes, maybe you just want a bit of background for your colour. Whatever it is, this is what, what a mop brush does. Now, say, let's say you've done all that and you think, oh, well, actually, I don't want the whole thing covered in paint. This is what. A small mop brush will give you. I'm going to wet this and I'm going to really wet it because I want to share with you something. So, a small mop brush. So, you've seen the bigger one with it, it gives you a bigger flow of movement. I keep forgetting I've got that thing over there. It gives you flow of movement. This will also allow you to eventually take the colour away. So, say, I don't want water there. And you can keep going with just water on your brush. I've got no paint and I'm dabbing it in and out. And you can just pick the water up, pick the paint up, and you can make you can make a pattern with just the water. So you've put your paint on with your long mop brush, and now you're just going around it in your water. That's what a small mop, mop brush will. So it's lifting off my paint. So you don't have to necessarily do put loads of paint on. It can also work in the opposite effect. So it can also lift the paint off and just give you the water. So it'll only, it will only do that if, we, of course, you've got paint already on your page. So keep going with it and practice with it. A mop brush is a really good brush to have. And if you're stamping, I like to use a mop brush. Now, when I was showing you last week, I was showing you using this kind of brush. This brush would be between, it's the medium round. So it's between a fine line now because it's got that tip to a mop brush because of the, the way it pings up the water. So, now I've talked to you about a little bit about what a, a rigger script and a fine liner. They all mean the same thing and what a mop brush does. Now you all saw the fact I have different size brushes. And sometimes you can have numbers on your brushes. I have gonna have to share with you this one because this is the only one that I have got numbers for my brushes. So what does numbers mean? 
numbers can be really confusing. You go into a shop, you see all these numbers on um, brushes, and you think, well, that one's got a six, that one's got an 11. Does, does, what does it mean? Does it mean the, the, the wider the brush? Does it mean the thinner the brush? Does it mean the fact it's got more bristles? What does the numbers mean? The numbers, I'm going to write this down because it'll help you if I can find a pen. I did have one. Oh, yeah. The numbers can help you pick brushes that you want when you are just starting out, when you just want to get your fine liner brushes, your script brush, when you just want brushes to do your stamping. So I'm going to write the numbers down. So uh, numbers will always start, and you have the smallest starting from 200, 200. The mop brush is mopping up. Yeah, the mop brush will allow you to mop up the water. It'll, 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 it'll allow you to mop up the water, but it'll also allow you your free movement. It's kind of a, a nice brush to have because I didn't explain it well it's kind of a nice brush to have when you just don't want to do anything you just want to practice with your hand you're not actually thinking about what you're doing you just want to move it does that make sense but it'll also mop up your water so say you didn't want I didn't want all that purple you can use a smaller mop brush mop up the water uh yep yeah. mop brush you're you're with it rian so it allows you to do things it allows you to free movement but it'll also allow you to pick your water up there is another brush i won't confuse everybody but there is another brush will allow you to do the same thing as well but um i will talk about that when I come to those brushes I don't want to confuse someone but yeah a mop brush will allow you to I use a mop brush when I don't really want to think about what I'm doing I just want some background color that's what a sort of a mop brush does so so the sizes on your brushes so your smaller brush will start from zero 20 slash zero then it goes to 12 zero then it goes to ten zero seven zero six zero that should be a hyphen bar sorry seven hyphen zero I've just made that into a ten but never mind a five slash zero four and then sometimes you might find brushes that have knots on. So they might start from zero, four zeros, or they might start from zero, zero. Then they might go up to one, zero, zero, two, zero, zero. And then once they've done the zeros all the way up to 30, then they'll just do the single number. So they'll go one, they'll go one, two, three, four, all the way up to 30. So you'll start with 20 hyphen zero, all the way up to four. Then you'll land up with four, four zeros. And then it'll start from two zeros, one slash zero. And the way to show you is, where do I put my small brushes? Because on my smaller brushes, if I can find them, is exactly that. In here. Right now. Yeah. In here. Ooh, I know you guys wouldn't be able to see. Now, this one is a three slash zero. So, this one is... This one is in this bracket. That brush, see the tip on it? That's in that bracket. 
So you've got these numbers here, which are your tiny, tiny, tiny brushes, but you're going from tiny, tiny to the like little bit up and a little bit more bristles. And then it goes from you. So you might find in shops, but it just has one bristle. You know, you're starting from there. So when you've got your numbers, and you just want to do your simple beginner numbers. I go for some stuff. I'd go for one of these that you've got a zero zero, and then whatever number you want to pick for like detail work, and then concentrate on brushes that I've just got one number on. That's what I would concentrate if you're like a beginner. If you want to build your brushes up, continue to work from this bracket that they've got the little zeros and your single numbers. I wouldn't worry about too much about the first lot of brackets because they are tiny little brushes. I don't even pick them up because they are super tiny. The tiny brushes are fine, fine detail. Artists would use them for like hair on animals, um, facial details because they are that tiny that they can pick up that one. So I'll we'll start from sort of this bracket and these go up to 30. So it'll be um zero zero hyphen 30 or my the other way around just depending on where it is so two three four and it's one two these are the brushes and i'm going to write them up to, up to 10 and then you'll know then Things go all the way up to 30. So start from these ones because these are nicer to work with. Okay, and these go all the way up to 30. And then move on. So scratch them, but I wanted to tell you what the numbers were. Then move on to your single numbers, and they will go up to 30 as well. Sometimes some shops, and I have seen them, they do sometimes these range up to, you might find it will say 100. Don't be too overwhelming with it. But if I sort of tell you the sort of simpler ones, um, then you won't feel overwhelmed when you go to buy brushes. So these are for your fine detail. So if you're using stamps and you want a little bit of detail on, use them. These will be your mop brushes, um, your angle brushes, and I'm going to explain what the difference is on the numbers. So, bearing that in mind, the higher the number, the bigger and the wider the brushes. So, for example, I have a 10 and I have, these are both angle brushes, and I have a 12. So, this one, both both the same let me try it 11 oh, you are. this is a better one this is a five this is a 12 so it's in, in the single bracket it's not i've got no numbers next to it or hyphen bars so as you can see this one's a lot wider and it has a lot more bristles this one is a lot thinner and um, it's still got bristles on it but it's tiny compared to that big brush now different artist brushes also like these brushes are not the same the, the same guy didn't make these brushes as he did these ones so let me get an angle brush from this pack that chris bought me as you can see i think that would be the fairest one just pick one now um yeah as you can see this one, even though this says it's a large angle, so this one hasn't got numbers on. And sometimes it'll say large, medium, small, extra small, tiny. Sometimes it'll say that on the brush. But different brushes made by different people, you can have the same number on them, but they will look completely different. I haven't got the same sort of number. I don't think I have. Let me have a look. No. I haven't, I haven't got the same brush. If you're in the shop next or you see brushes, put the same brush up against each other. Have it from different um, 
when I go to the range, in one shelf there will be brushes made by one person and then underneath there will be brushes made by another person. Take one brush from shelf A and take one shelf from shelf B, the same brush, and put them side by side. You will find that they are not the same. They're not the same because they're made by different people. Um, and as we all know, nothing's the same in life. It's like you can buy a T-shirt from um, a T-shirt in your size from one supermarket and you can go to an Outlook shop in, in your town and buy a T-shirt in town. And even though it's the same size, you might find one is smaller. It's the same with brushes. So it makes it a little bit complicated when you're picking brushes. But that's what the numbers are generally for. It means the wider the, the, the numbers are there to tell you that more brushes are on there, the wider and the thicker they are. That's what the numbers are there for. So, and that's all they're there for. So all you really need to concentrate on is what the brushes are, what they're called, because then that will give you a clear idea what to use them for. Um, and that's all they're there for, really. The numbers are. I don't take a, a lot of detail into what numbers are. I tend to have a think about, OK, what am I using them for? What do I want to pick up? Do I want to pick the detail up? Do I want just a, a, an overall water brush? What do I want my brush to? What do I want to use my brush for? So I won't necessarily pick, even though I did pick this pack, picked it from Amazon, and it has got numbers on. I don't take a heck of a lot of notice of the numbers, um, and I don't do it for a reason. It's just because I don't, because the like I say. Different, the same brush made by two different people can be different. So that's what the numbers are there for. Sometimes when you do buy a pack as well, numbers can also tell you if you've bought a pack and it comes with a sheet, you'll have like, it'll say number two brush is a mop brush. Sometimes you'll have like a sheet that'll tell you what number, what the number's for. Um, so that's what basically the number's for. So, with that in mind, I'm going to share with you what a wash technique is. So, I hope I've explained it a little bit better. And, like I say, each Friday, if I'm able to do it, I'll be doing parts. So, on one Friday, I'll do a part on one technique, and the other Friday, I'll do a part on another technique. Last week, I talked about um, the wet on wet and um, some detail on how to soak water up stuff. This week, I'm going to show you something different. So I'm using a clear um, plate underneath my paper, only because even though this is watercolour paper, it's a little bit sturdier for me to work with um, because I want it raised a little for you guys to see what I'm doing. Right, so I have next to me some beautiful stamps I bought. And we're going to use our brushes that I've explained with you tonight. The script brush and the mop brush. We're going to use them to um, create a picture. It's a masterpiece. Right, okay. Yeah, I need stamps. Okay, so I think I'm going to go different stamps. I'm going to create a scene, I think. Um, and what I tend to do, because my stamps are everywhere, is I tend to cut them up. And then I'll put them back in the same packet. So we want to use her. And I think we'll use this. So 
just want to create a little bit of a scene. And I think we'll go for this. And I got some birch here as well. with that <gasps> and you can buy um books on watercolors as well that's quite helpful when you're first learning to do learning about the medium and learning how to do it i'm gonna do a front i think so i'm gonna take my sheet out Out. And, and I'm using watercolour paper. And I'm just going to fold it and I'm going to try and rip it on the side. Love the stamp set. It's beautiful, isn't it, Paula? There we go. Right, work on one at a time. So got my brushes in my little magic pod one Sure, my oh, yes, come on. and then this one. Yep, all clean, right? Okay, got some spray here, and I'm using this glass. Um, you can do it on a glass board. I tend to like doing it on um, a raised surface, then I can move it. And do another one. That's the new reason I like doing it on a raised surface. So I'm just going to damp the mat down a little bit. And what that does is soak the paper on the back. So it's a little bit damp. So the paper's not going to sort of curve up. I'm using not any special tape. Just, just ordinary fog tape. And I'm going to create my border. And we're going to create our design using the stamps that I've brought out. Uh, the mop brush is mopping up. Yes, yeah, sub to each other. Um, if you're new to my channel, I will definitely go back when I come off live and subscribe to you. Um, YouTube is such a big place. And it's really nice when we get to support each other and learn what each other is all about. And it's really, really nice. Okay, so I'm going to do there. So I've now got my piece. Right, so let's get stamping first. Uh, what one do I want to take? I think I'm going to take her. Actually, I might keep them on the, the lid. Right. I'm just going to damp on my paper first. I might not even need my stamping block. I might just want to dampen it. Cause don't forget, I'm not doing wet on wet. I just want to dampen my paper just to make sure it's a little bit moist, but not soaking wet. I have got some distress inks next to me. 
um, I keep meaning to pick up a, um, oh, what they call it, Versit, Versimark, is it Versimark, is that what they're called, ink, these react a bit with water, so just bear that in mind, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to rub my stamp, doesn't matter if it doesn't pick up all the detail, because that's what we're going to use our fine liner brush to do. Um, I think I'm going to go here. Perfect. And I think I'm just going to go with that, center that off. I won't use that one. I'm going to center this off the center, so I'm not going to use all, I'm just going to use some of it. And then before I start watercoloring this, I'm going to um, dry it with my heat gun. And then decide where do I want it. Because I've got the frog tape there, it some of it was stamped on there, but when I take the paper off, the, ta the tape off, it won't um, affect it. And then I have two little birdies. And I'm just going to pop them just there right now next to me if i can get them on my drawer i have my artist brushes so these brushes one of them i picked up separately which is this one this is a fiber castell now fiber castell is a really good make especially for paints brushes um pens they i'll say this um, if you go on Amazon tonight, as most of you are aware, it's Black Friday. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just here in the UK. I don't think so. But um, anyway, Fiber Castell are on offer on the Black Friday deals on Amazon. You can pick pens up for about £5. They're on sale at the moment. And the reason I know this is because I'm... I might have picked them up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Fiber Castell are on offer. There's um, paints on offer, brushes, pens, artist pens. You've got a pack of them, and you can pick different colours. So they've got black, um, like um, like pinks and purple, blues, um, green, that kind of colour. They're really, really good. Um, so they're on offer at the minute on Amazon. So I'm going to dry this. I know that Mr. Tim has made these inks to react with water. Um, I'm not going to completely wet this down because that, that would be a wet on wet technique. We're doing a wash technique. So. I'm just going to take my pen. Actually, no, I won't do it just yet. I'm going to take my paints. So I'm going to use the real fine line ones. So I'm using the small. These ones, like I say, they're either. Um, I've got a nitty nitty spider climbing up on my um, camera. Right. I'm going to do a bit of pink for her. Um, dress. Now I want mostly water to start me off. Now 
this is still it's reacting with the inks. Damn it. That's okay because what I'm going to do in a second is dry this completely off. And this is, would be the wash technique. And what you'd end up doing, this is why I needed Versi Mark, is see how the ink is reacting? What you end up doing is you dry it. You dry it and then you would go back to it and add more paint. My last drying. doing i'm not following why well, i'm following the lines but i'm not giving it all i kind of like the fact the ink is run because it's giving me a bit of dark shade without me realizing that's what i mean when i say watercolor is one of those mediums where you can play about with it make happy accidents and you don't necessarily have to make happy accidents in order for you to get a really nice effect. Now she does have a dress on. I'm going to lower you down so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going in up the top. I've got a little bit too much water on my paint. But that's okay. Because when I dry it. When I dry it, it should just dry. So this would be a wash effect. So you would add paint, you would dry it, which is what we're doing, and then you would add more paint. So I'm just going to add a bit more. Yeah, I want to see if we have, and I'm going to go back over to my paints, and I want to put a bit of darkness into her dress, so I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add this colour I think, now I want a bit more paint because the ink is reacting with my pink because it's obviously watercolour I want a bit more pink just going on the brush and that will give me more colour as you can see it does just that so like I say these are called a rigger brush a fine liner or what did I say? Fine liner, rigger, or script brush. That's what they're called. And I'm just using the fact that the ink has um, moved to my advantage. And I'm leaving some bits white. So as you can see, it really, really gives a really good effect. So I'm going to move on to the tree that's next to it. I'm going to make sure I've got all my colour out of my brush. And I'm going to use my small mop brush for this. So I've got a real small one and I'm going to use one, a tiny light colour. And like I said, because the ink is reacting, um, 
it, I quite like the effect that it's given me. So it's given me a bit of darkness to shade, which is quite nice. So I'm using the, the side of the brush to give me those lines that I talked about earlier. And this is a small mop brush. And as you can see, the ink isn't reacting yet because I haven't got much on the brush. And I'm going to dry that off and I'm gonna create a darker green, which I have here. I don't want to go too dark. Okay, let me dry that off. And the other thing I will do is turn it to the side. So I'm just creating where it would be dark. I obviously don't want to do it all. I'm using the tip of the brush, the front and the side to give me those tiny lines of details. And then I would say sort of that's done because I don't want to sort of be playing around with it too much. Now, I'm going to go back to my fine liner brush. And I'm going to create um, a bit of contrast in a basket. So I'm going to get some yellow on my brush. And I'm just going to go and give it a bit of contrast. There's something to look at. Work out where you want to leave and work out where you want to look at. So. I'm going to leave all that for a second and I'm going to concentrate on this. So the top, I don't want too dark, but I do want to create um, a bit of colour on there. So that ink will help me create what I want to create. So I'm going to use my large rigger, my large script or fine liner for this. And all it's got on there is some water. Now, what that will do is react the ink because, as we all know, Mr. Tim um, actually makes distress inks to react to water. So I am reacting it on both brush. And then I will dry it and then try again. So you know how I said this can also pick water up. Right, now I've got the water off that. I'm going to wet my brush completely and I'm going to move that away. I'm going to use bit of brown but I'm not going to go quite deep in with the brown so I do want to use a lot of water for this because I don't want to overshadow it okay Use my uh, medium rigger to pick up those, pick up the water. And I'm just going to go underneath as if you're seeing that, almost like a, a shadow. OK, 
Okay. So using my where's my fine liner brush gone? Because I can put in the detail with my pens. Um I'm gonna use a bit of dark green just to tie in as if there was trees on there. So all I'm gonna do it's almost do as if ivy's going down, little line strokes. And you can do this with absolutely any stamps. Okay, I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to put in the light green, just like we did on that brush there. Where's the light green? And then down here and up here. There we go. So... We've effectively given a boring stamp a bit of colour in it. I'm going to make sure all this is dry now because I'm actually finished with my things and I'm going to make sure I can fill in those details with my lines. So I have an artist pen. This one is small and then these are these are in black so it just depends what you want i've got two that are the same so i'm going to use my small for my um i don't know what you would call this what would you call a See, and you can just follow your lines. I don't know whether you guys can see that, but I can. Let's see, Wincy Spider, you can go over there. And little lines next door to each other gives you a bit of shadow without even thinking about it too much. See, we've created trees that weren't on the original stamp. I'm just going to go down here. So this one is brown. This is the colour I'm using. And I'm not going over all the lines. I'm just picking up the detail that I want. So I wouldn't necessarily go over the green. Because then it wouldn't look like what I want it to look like. Which is ivy. Okay. Over to the other side, I'm going to turn my piece and little lines. So, let me do it here. So, little lines like this, it's nothing really, but little lines like that will give you branches when you've got colour on your work. Good evening, Sarah, sweetheart. How are we this evening? There we go, and then I'm going to follow that trench tree down, giving it little lines as we speak. In between, follow my stamp set, and then I should have done all this in the green, but I haven't bothered, so I'm just doing little diddly lines. I'm just going to follow, see if I can follow that shape. So all I've done is just follow this shape. Right. 
you are painting looks beautiful oh thank you sweetheart and then i'm using my black because i want to give my little lady a bit of detail and you can use your paint so your wash technique is where you put your paint down you would dry it and then you would bring your paint back up on you would put it sort of effectively on your back on your work now your wet on wet is where you work with wet paint and you're working with wet paint to create your picture your wash technique is where you effectively painting drying painting drying and you can air dry it you can go back to it make yourself a cup of tea and come back to it or coffee whatever you drink and i'm just gonna go up here with my little lines for a dress and the reason i'm turning my work is so that the smudge from the pen doesn't smudge into the where i don't want it because sometimes you can end up with a smudge mark i have got paint on you and it can spoil your work because you'll find as you move in you'll get this smudge mark that's following you all the way around your work so all i'm doing is just really freely following my lines of my lady Now, because she's got a brown hat and I've left it brown, I'm going to switch back to my brown pen. And she's got lines in her hat that I really want to concentrate on. There you go. See? Right now my little birds, I didn't put any paint on. And you can decide whether you want to cover it all, whether you want to just put paint on. Pick up your pieces that you want to put paint on if you're working for stamps. Now, like I say, I'm trying to make these like back to basics watercolour videos um easier for you guys to do. So I didn't want to do it freehand and then somebody turn around and say, well, actually, Claire, I'd love to do that, but I can't draw. So I'm now going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to take the paint off. Take the paint off. Take the tape off, even. I'm just going to take one strip off at a time. And you can see it's given me it's given me a picture without me even doing anything so that's with using just the rigger of liner pen uh, they're called rigger fine liner or script that's using the the fine liner then let's call them that or the mop brush paint brushes that's all i've used to create this picture with so i do hope you've enjoyed tonight's live um let me know what you think to this back to basics video is it helping anyone um are you feeling inspired to get your watercolors out and start using your stamps next week i'm going to show you and like hopefully I'm going to show you a different technique and I'm going to use different brushes in order to do that technique with. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So I do did know that everybody was going really quiet. And usually that means you're looking at what I'm doing. Uh, thank you, Paula, for your comments, sweetheart. Yes, Paula, it's a beautiful stamp set. It's actually called... The Rose Garden Collection and it's by Clear Impressions. Now I had this stamp set off eBay. Um, it's a beautiful stamp set and that's why I got it because of the images it gave me. Um, but yeah, can you imagine that on a front of a card? 
that would look stunning on a front of a card look beautiful i've got to show you something as well while i'm because i don't want to shut everybody off um you know how i was waiting for um an organization box for my challenge which ends on the 2nd of december so monday is the second i can't think monday or tuesday monday this was it it came it came today and um i'm well chaffed so i bought one for myself so i'm going to show you mine i'm not going to open this one i'm going to show you this will go into second place so this is what it looks like so you open them and you can buy these individually and build them up so take this off and you have you have the compartments you have them you have them they don't move the sliders don't come out but they're perfect so you can keep building and building and building all your containers and then you can just keep adding and adding and adding on top which is what i want to do um so i bought one for myself and i bought one for the challenge so it came it eventually came through the door so i'm well chuffed so um i've packed up all the prizes ready to announce the winner um on monday i cannot wait to announce the winner um you've all really enjoyed in with my challenge and if you still want to join in you've got to monday to do so um so don't feel like oh it's coming to the end how do i join in all i asked really was for a video of your craft space and three different ways you saw your craft goodies so you could show me your craft space that could be like a table that could be um, a room a tray literally just show me where you craft um and then your three options could be like where do you store your scissors where do you store your pencils where do you store your brushes where do you store your things and it gives um ideas and um inspiration on everybody that's watching the challenge on different ways they can store stuff so the purple one i, I won't open the purple one but the purple one of these is going um into the second place bag and it eventually came i was thrilled a bit when it came through the door this morning and you can fit all different stuff in it and it allows you as well to build on it and they weren't that expensive they were about two pound i think it was two pounds 62. i've got amazon prime which means free postage and then you can like i say build on it and you've essentially got these three to start off um so yeah um i'm so excited to announce the winner so keep watching my channel um i had some bb bb craft goods uh this week um so i'm going to be doing some projects with that and yeah next week is another part of the watercolor paintings so beautiful claire i'll definitely be doing it oh well done jan i'm so pleased that i've inspired you um thank you claire your painting looks beautiful thank you miss sarah thank you paula sweetheart thank you to everybody that watched tuned in tonight um tonight was a little bit late coming on haps mine but i'm so glad you all tuned in and watched me um so i hope i make your weekend have a lovely weekend wherever you are in the world um and like i say please give what color a paint and a go even if you just pick up two brushes and a couple of paints just literally it's one of those mediums that allows you to be creative in all different aspects and you can add it to absolutely anything so i will leave you with that thought have a lovely night wherever you are no star which is good night in welsh and i will catch up with you all in my next live next week or in my next video take care ladies bye for now